Hi, my scholars. You are welcome to my school channel. My name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, you'll be joining me to solve the Jam CBT past question for the subject physics, the year 2012. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, because we'll be right. back to my school youtube channel and in this video segment you'll be joining me to solve questions 1 2 14 so let's start with question 1 in order to remove the error of parallax when taking measurement with a meter rule the high should be focused out it should be focused vertically downwards okay on the markings on the meter rule okay so vertically downwards like this if you look uh, into the meter rule from the side or slantly you are going to influence or produce this error due to parallax so you look vertically downwards on the marking so the correct option here is option c um, the high should be focused vertically downwards on the markings question two a load is pulled at a uniform speed along a horizontal floor by a rope at 45 degrees okay to the floor now if the force in the rope is 1500 newtons so this is a representation for also mass times gravity okay so what is the frictional force on the load all right so we should know that frictional force can be equals to coefficient of um coefficient of force or limiting force or static force times your normal reaction okay this is what i mean something like this right Force okay, but we don't need to go through all of these uh, metrics. All we just need to do, you can use this, all right. We are given this already as 1500 multiplies your sine theta, and we know theta is given as 45, all right. And we can tell that sine 45 cos 45, they are both 0 0.7071. Only that tan theta, tan 45 is 1. How do I know that? Remember that tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta, right? So, given that we are looking for tan 45, that implies sine 45 over cos 45. And we can tell again that sine 45 is 0 0.7071. Or if you want to use it in sod representation, you can say root 2 over 2, right? Over cos 45, 0 0.7071, okay? Or you can say root 2 over 2, okay? This strikes out this, it becomes 1. If you want to make use of this, that will be root 2 over 2 divides root 2 over 2. That means root 2 over 2 times 2 over root 2, 1. One. So we can see that tan 45 is just equal to 1. So this is just the side information. So let's come back to what we have. We have sine 45, which is known for 0 0.7071, all root 2 over 2. 2 year 1, 2 year 750. So if 750 multiplies this, at least based on what we are given, what we should have should be around 1060.66, sometimes maybe around 65 or thereabouts. So I can roughly bring this to 1061. 6 to this becomes 7, 7 to this becomes 1. So this is what we should have. So let's go back to the screen and see if we have this presented to us in the options on the screen. So if you look through the options, you will find that in option D. So option D is the correct option. Question 3. Calculate the total distance covered by a train before coming to rest. V equals 0. Yeah. If its initial speed, U, is given as 30 meters per second, okay, with a constant retardation of 0 0.1, 
um, 0 0.1 so this tells us that this is a negative acceleration so what does that imply we can decide to use retardation equals u minus v over t in contrast to v minus u over t for acceleration so retardation is a negative acceleration so i can decide to use this equation of motion v square equals u square plus 2 a s very well we know that v square right now is zero at rest so this is zero this is gone so that is u square 30 square right plus two times our negative acceleration 0 0.1 times the distance we are looking for so at the end of the day we will have 900 you know when you say 30 times 30 that is 30 square okay you don't need to do all of this just separate the zero somewhere three times three that makes nine just add up the zero one one and that makes 900 so direct okay so then we have plus two times minus 0 0.1 that is minus 0 0.2 okay. so this is definitely minus plus times minus gives us minus so the prevalent sign here would be minus so remember we have this as zero squared still zero so what do we do we can send this outside when minus crosses over it becomes positive right so divide both sides by 0 0.2 0 0.2 okay so we can tell without calculator that 900 over 1 divided by 0 0.2 okay where is 0 0.2 means 2 over 10 Or you can still break it down 1 over 5 anything you want to do okay so I can still say this is 1 over 5 so one works for me so if you want to switch the sign we have 900 over 1 right times 5 over 1 okay so 900 times 5 that is 4500 over 1 that still gives us 4500 meters so let's see if we have this given to us in the options provided 4500 meters okay take note of the mix up okay we can find that in option b so option b is the correct option four a car starts from rest and moves with a uniform acceleration of 30 meter per second square for 20 seconds okay so from rest tells you that u equals zero okay so calculate the distance covered at the end of the motion so we can use s equals ut plus half a t squared so s equals ut plus half a t squared so we are told that u is from rest so that makes zero zero times t that is zero so definitely this is gone so we are going to have f equals half a t squared okay that will be half times our acceleration which is 30 as of one okay times our time square that is 20 times 20 okay all right so two year one two year ten okay so like i said earlier just ignore the zeros at first two times one that is two two times three that is six so how many zeros one two three so this is 6,000 meters or I can bring it to kilometers as 6 kilometers. Okay, so let's see if we have any of this given to us in the options provided. 6,000 meters or 6 kilometers. Where do we find that? Of course, we can find that in option A. So option A is the correct option. Do not forget to click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the MySchool website. There you can get the MySchool mobile app or the MySchool software. So join me as we solve question 5. A rocket is fired from the Earth's surface to a distant planet. Okay, so by Newton's Isaac Isaac, Newton's law of universal gravitation, the force will do what? Okay, remember that from this uh, universal gravitation, we know that the force F, okay, is equals to the product of the masses, okay, of these particles, all right? And it is inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart or the distance between them. So F is equals to M1, M2, product of their masses over R square. So over R square tells you that inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart or distance between them. So that tells you that as force increases, the distance should reduce, okay, inverse 
relation, okay, relationship or whatever you want to put it. So the correct option here is option A. The first F we increase as R reduces. So that is option A. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get notified as soon as we upload the next video segment. Six. If a freely suspended object is pulled to one side and then released, okay, it oscillates about the point of suspension because why? So if you check the definition of simple harmonic motion, you will see that the acceleration is directed towards a particular fixed point, okay, and is proportional to displacement. And that's why one of the features that you are going to also notice is that when the, dis when the displacement is zero, okay, at the equilibrium position, that is center C, you know, it moves from here to here, then to this side. So this equilibrium position C, okay, at this particular spot, the displacement is zero, but the speed is maximum and acceleration is zero as well. So you can see at this point, acceleration is zero, displacement is zero. That tells you a directly proportional relationship between them. So the correct option is option A. Acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement. So that is the option we are looking for. A once again. Seven. An object moves in a circular path of radius 0.5 meters with a speed of one meter per second. Okay, so what is the angular velocity? So we can say angular velocity equals theta over t, but also we can have this derivation that angular velocity as well is v over r. That is, um, this is the speed v, 1 divided by the radius r. So 1 divided by 0 0.5 should give you what? So let's just um, do that very quickly, yeah? Okay, without using calculators. So we should have v over r, that is 1 over 0 0.5 yes for the radius and you will recall that is 1 over 1 divided by 0 0.5 0 0.5 means 5 over 10 right okay or you can say 5 year 1 5 year 2 so i'm looking at 1 over 1 divides 1 over 2 which means 1 over 1 times 2 over 1 so 2 times 2 we have 2 1 times 1 we have 1 so that is 2 divided by 1 that is 2 so this is our angular velocity too. So let's see if we have this given to us as a resource in the options provided. Yes, we can find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. Question 8. An object of mass 20 kg slides down an inclined plane at an angle of 30 degrees. Okay, so to the horizontal. The coefficient of static friction is what? So you don't need to go about... Um, working around different metrics just use this um, coefficient friction equals tan theta makes it very simple so the theta here is 30 so tan 30 is 0 0.577 thereabouts if you approximate you should have is 0 0.6 that is found in option d so option d is the correct option question nine a block and tackle is used to raise a load of 250 newtons through a vertical distance of 30 meters what is the efficiency of the system if the work done against friction is 1,500 joules? So the total work done by the system or in the entire system is given as the work done in raising the load through that distance and that will be 250 times 3 times 30. Okay, total work done okay, will be 250 okay, times 30 added to the work done against friction. So the total work done in raising the load added to the work done against friction and that is given as 1500 okay so if we had this up 250 times this just ignore the zeros 25 times 3 that is 75 then bring out the zeros okay so added to 15 okay 75 plus 15 that is 90 then add your zeros we have 9000 so this is your work input right this for input and remember the efficiency for block and tackle, we can use this, of course, we can say work output over work input, right, times 100%. Okay, so this is our work output here, given as 7,500 over the work input, or you are talking about the total work done, that is 9,000, okay, times 100 Okay, so let's walk around this. We have zero strikes out zero, zero strikes out 
zero, zero strikes out zero. Okay, so from here we can still see three year three, right? Three year twenty five. So in all I have 250, 25 times 10 or 25 times 1, that is 25. You bring the 0 over 3. Okay, so 3 in 25, we can walk around this. 3 in 25, that is 8, right? Remaining 1. 3 in 10, that is 3, remaining 1. So that is 3, 83 or number 1 over 3. Or that can also tell us 83.33333333. What have you? So let's see if we have this given to us in the options provided. 83.33333. And we can find that in option C. So option C is the correct option. 83.3%. Make sure you use the link on the description below by clicking on it. So once you do that, it's going to take you to the My School website. Okay, there you can ask your questions right now and you get to meet with our solution provider. So join me as we solve question 10. If a load of 1 kg stretches a cord by 1.2 cm, what is the force constant of the cord given g as 10 m per second? So, we're just going to go into Hooke's law. You know, we are talking about the um, provided that the elastic, elastic limit is not exceeded, okay? The extension of the compression produced is directly proportional to the load or the force applied, okay? So, this is just all we are saying mathematically. The force equals the extension or the compression, okay? And that implies F equals KE. So we are asked to look for the constant of proportionality, which is this. So that implies K equals dividing both sides by E, okay? K equals F over E, okay? We are giving our E as um, 1.2, that's the extension, but we are working in meters. So remember that 100 centimeter, right, equals 1 meters. Therefore, 1.2 will be equal to x, right? So that should tell us that x is equal to 1.2, right? Okay, times 1, 1.2 rather, times 1, okay, then divided by 100, okay? So that will just shift the zero further. So we can just work around this as this is our extension, 1.2 divided by 100. So we have the force here. We are given the mass instead of force. And if you want to bring mass into force, that will be 1 times 10. So the force here is 10. So that will be 10 over 1 divided by the extension produced, which is given as 1.2 over 100. Okay. Okay. So that means that that will be 10 over 1 times 100 over 1.2. Okay, so we can go ahead and just do this. That will be 10. 10 times 100. 1 times 1, that is 1. How many zeros? 1, 2, 3. Okay, so when we divide, this is what we should have. A33.3333. Okay, it just goes on like that. A333.33. So we can just bring it to this. A33. So remember that you can take your time to go over this clip again and again until you understand the concepts fully. Okay, so just take your time to practice alongside our apps and software. So you can see we can find that in option B. So option B is the correct option. We know that you may have better steps or explanation to tackle any of the questions we have solved so far. We'd like to know. All you need to do, use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations or solutions you'd like to share. Question 11. An object of volume 1 meter cube, okay, and mass 2 kg is totally immersed in a liquid of density 1 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, calculate its apparent weight. So, uh, we should just note that um, first, the force of buoyancy, or we can just start with apparent weight, um, is equal to the subtraction, okay, from the real weight, subtracting the buoyant force from it. That is real weight minus the buoyant force, okay? So the buoyant force can be gotten as density, that's for the liquid, density times volume times acceleration due to gravity, that is G. So that will be 1 times the volume, okay, which is given as 1, okay, that makes another 1 times the acceleration due to gravity, that is 10. So we've gotten our force of buoyancy as 10. 
okay and we now say real weight real weight minus buoyant force so what is our real weight weight is mass times gravity right so what is our mass two acceleration due to gravity that is 10 so 2 times 10 that is 20 okay so i repeat again apparent weight means you are subtracting the real weight you are subtracting um, the buoyant force from the real weight so that is real weight minus the buoyant force we've gotten the buoyant force as 10 the real weight mass times gravity as 20 so 20 minus 10 that gives you 10 very easy so the correct option is option b for 10 newton 12. The pressure at any point in a liquid at rest depends only on the what? The depth and density, okay? So, why do we talk about um, pressure? Okay, you know, like solids that um, is just um, downwards that they exert this, okay? When it comes to liquid, okay, in a liquid, you know, at um, any point, at all points in a liquid, okay, at the same level, take note of that, at any point at the same level, the pressure is the same thing, okay? Secondly, you should also note that as the depth increases, okay, the pressure also increases, okay? So that means at this um, depth, okay, the pressure here at this depth is greater than what we have here. So the, the deeper you go, the greater the pressure. Okay, so that is first about depth. Then at, uh, about density, you know, at the same depth for different um, um, liquids, okay, at the same depth for the same level for different liquids. I take that again, okay, for different le uh, liquids, okay, at the same level or at the same depth. Let's just take at the same depth for different liquids. The pressure will vary because of the variation of density. So the density of the liquid affects the pressure of the liquid in regards to the depth. So if we take liquid A and liquid B, all right, and uh, we are looking at the same depth, probably the depth of this, my little finger, okay? Their pressure will vary due to their differences in density. So we are talking about the depth at first, you know, we talk about depth that um, the deeper you go, as in as depth increases, pressure increases. So these are the two things that we are looking at, depth and density. So option A is the correct option question 13 a balloon whose volume is 300 meter cube is filled with hydrogen gas okay so if the density of air is 1.3 find the uptrust on the balloon so if you look at Archimedes principle you know you, you, you are talking about field either liquid or gas so to get the uptrust uh, the force we are talking about here is just going to be volume okay multiplies the density then multiplies acceleration due to gravity. So that will be V times density times G. Okay, so volume of the object, which is 300 times this times this. Okay, so 1.3 times 10, that is 13. Okay, so 13 times 300. Okay, at first, just ignore the zeros. 13 times 3, that is 39. So just add the two zeros back. That is 3900. Zero, zero. So we can find that in option C. Option C is the correct option. Question 14. Clinical thermometers are examples of mercury in glass thermometers. Okay, at first, when you talk about um, thermometers, you use them to measure temperature. And you know temperature is the degree of coldness or hotness of a body. Okay, so when you talk about types of thermometer, we have liquid in glass, we have gas thermometer, and what have you. So, if we now go back to liquid in, gla in glass, the common ones are the mercury and the alcohol. So, the clinical thermometer is a very good um, kind of mercury in glass thermometer. And one of the characteristics, also one of the characteristics I can share is that um, it is used in hospital to measure the temperature of human body, okay? Um, temperature range of 35 to 43 degrees small range okay so and it has a constriction as well so the correct option here is option d clinical thermometers are examples of mercury in glass thermometers option d is your correct option we've come to the end of this video segment but there are definitely more content to come all you need to do for us is to hit that like button also Click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get notified as soon as we upload the next video segment just for you.